So welcome back to the channel guys and it is looking like we're gonna get a beautiful autumnal rainy woodland adventure today so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I want to talk all about this new focusing technique that I've been using a lot over the past two to three months that really helps me get pin sharp photographs every single time that I use this technique. Um, I think you're gonna find it pretty interesting. Apart from that, let's go and see if we can find some nice photographs in this stunning woodland. Come with me. So yeah, for any of you that watch uh, my channel regularly, you're probably thinking, ah, oh, I've already seen this technique where you use the LCD screen and you're kind of zooming in. Now I'm still doing that, but I've changed it up ever so slightly, so stick with me. Um, I think you're gonna find it pretty interesting. Um, and I like to think I've just sort of fine-tuned this technique, like I said at the start there, over the past probably two to three months, and it's working wonderfully well for me. Now, before we can get into that, we need to find um, a, a photograph or a composition to work on. Um, this is my local woodland. I honestly haven't been here properly with my camera since spring. I've driven through it a lot. I feel like it's just starting to hit like proper autumn now. It is absolutely, honestly, the colors are amazing. Really nice conditions today. Um, fortunately, this is somewhere I've been a lot. So even if I can't find any new compositions, I, I, I feel like I can return to older ones and actually improve on them because the conditions, uh, sorry, the colors are so beautiful. Um, let's go and see what we can find. that watch me regularly I would like to think that you recognize this scene instantaneously and um, I was back here in spring and I took a photograph of this this um, this very scene this very woodland scene I'll pop it up on the screen now I was really happy with that shot but I've just I'm just coming back now to see if I can get a better version of it whilst we've got all these colors and um, compositionally the only thing that I'm struggling with is there's a lot less leaves on the trees because we're well into autumn now which means we're naturally capturing more of the sky look there's so many more gaps as you look up uh, sort of through the canopy which is a little bit of a shame but I've just tried to angle my camera down ever so slightly um, to try and eradicate as much of that sky as possible so the composition is going to be slightly different now before we get into the focusing technique that I use here and I use probably 95% of the time, let's talk about where to focus, okay? Because that's equally as important in my opinion. Um, now, I've said this before on this channel, I think uh, focal points in landscape photography can be really overcomplicated and I've got two approaches that work for me every time. I'm either focusing one third of the way into the image and stopping down ever so slightly, or I'm choosing a prominent subject within my frame to focus on you know I'm choosing something right what do I want to focus on what do I want to be the sharpest area of this photograph and that's the approach that I'm using here so compositionally we've got this beautiful sycamore tree here that's on the very left hand side of my frame which leans in to this area of the forest and eventually to this beautiful beech tree in the very far right hand side of my frame okay so you can see how the composition works you know this sycamore tree sort of leans in this way encourages the eye to move this way then you got this tree which encourages the eye to go this way eventually into the beech tree now focal points i need to focus on this sycamore tree i want it to be tack sharp you know it's fairly close to the lens i'm not bothered if we lose a tiny little bit of focus as we move back towards this beech tree for me that's just quite natural you know i want this pin sharp so let's get into the focus technique this is all about using your live view using your lcd screen okay and what we're going to do 
is actually use the magnification buttons here and we're going to zoom right in on the area where you want to focus. Zoom as far in as you can go really and uh, for me like I said I'm zooming in or magnifying in sorry on this sycamore tree. So there we go we get really really far in which means we get a really good idea of whether or not we're actually going to be in focus but this is where I've changed my technique a little bit. Once I'm magnified in I will now auto focus so I've assigned this back button here as my focus button my shutter button now purely just takes photographs okay it doesn't focus once I'm zoomed all the way in like this I'll hit the back, back, back button focus sorry and there we go it locks into focus and here's the thing right this is why I think it's a great hybrid of man and machine you know we've got the auto focus feature but because we're so incredibly magnified in I can use my eyes just to double or treble check whether or not it's actually locked into focus properly. If you're magnified all the way out and you're focusing somewhere, you know, it, the little square might go green, you might think it's in focus, uh, but it might not be, you know, sometimes it can malfunction. It's just a machine at the end of the day, especially when it's dark, um, which you so often get in a woodland scene. So because we're so magnified in, I can use my eyes and I can see, yep, yeah, it's locked into focus. That looks wonderfully sharp. Magnify all the way back out, take the photograph and you can guarantee that that focal point is going to be pin sharp every single time. Um, I'd like to think, I've said this in the past as well, I'd like to think that my photographs are a great example of how this works for me. I've never ever had any troubles with my focus. So I'll show you this shot now. Hopefully you'll see that the sycamore tree is nicely in focus and uh, we'll move on and see if we can find something else to photograph. I hope you like this shot. Tell here we're getting a little bit of light. Um, it looks like the last of the rain has finished. We've had a lot of storms here in the UK recently, and I think we're due to have sort of four or five days of nice weather. So that's this beginning here. Um, however, I don't think it suits woodland very well. But what I'm going to do is um, try and use it to my advantage in a way. Um, so you can see here, I found this beautiful tree. It's stunning, like so much character. It's almost personified, you know. Beautiful. So I'm going to. Um, Take a photograph of this, I think. Uh, I think it's quite spooky. Um, it fits quite well with, well, we're just past Halloween. Um, and I actually think it works quite well with that fairly harsh light coming from the right hand side and hitting it. So I'm gonna get set up here. I'm gonna try and take an image where I can like sort of isolate this beech tree. Um, I think it's a beech tree as a subject and really try and capture that character that it has. So let's get set up. <laughs> Whoa, so the sun is, yeah, it's definitely out now. Um, I must admit, just turn the brightness up a little bit there, and probably not the best of conditions for woodland photography. Um, for my personal preference, I don't like it when it's really bright, but it's still gonna work in terms of what this video is about, you know, um, we're focusing on um, focus. <laughs> and uh, on top of that, I think this particular composition is gonna be quite nice when we do have better conditions perhaps fog, perhaps heavy rain, if I'd have got here a little bit earlier on um, to this particular spot when we had that rain, I think this would have been quite nice. Um, I find the light is a little bit distracting. When you see the image, you can make your own mind up. But yeah, um, of course, exactly the same focusing technique here. Um, and I think it is a beech tree, isn't it? This, yeah, pretty sure. 
correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so much character. And one thing that I like very much about it is the, the darkness of the trunk um, and the prominence actually of the trunk by the time I've composed this shot. And on top of that, quite similar to the previous composition, we've got a bit of a lean on this particular tree that's uh, at the bottom of the trunk it's quite straight and then it begins very subtly to start leaning towards the left and then it's got this branch that arches all the way over um, the sort of background as I've composed it here and I like that you know it's almost like this main prominent subject is actually framing all the autumnalness it's definitely not a word um, that's going on in the background and um, so I've decided um, in terms of focus, to focus on the beech tree. Again, it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. I'm not bothered if I lose a little bit of focus as we go you know, further, uh, deeper into the image, let's say. Um, in fact, I think that'll be nicer. I think that'll um, rid a little bit of distraction from all the carnage that's going on in the background because there is a huge splash of color. Um, so that's what I've done, and I've done exactly the same technique, guys. I've used the magnify button on my camera to zoom in on a certain area of the beech tree, doesn't matter where it is. And I've pressed my back button focus, bang, we are locked into focus. And like I said before, I can see um, myself, whether or not the, the, the autofocus has been successful. And then I can magnify back out if I'm happy and boom, take the shot. So for you that watch me regularly, you'll see there, it is very similar to what I used to do, where I used to use the live view to zoom right in on my focal point and then I would manual focus myself with the focal ring, which is a similar concept. You know, I can see myself, whether or not it's getting into focus. Um, but I find this way a lot quicker. You know, sometimes I'm struggling with the manual of manual focus with my eyes. Is it in focus? I'm like messing about, trying to bring it out of focus. Um, whereas if you can just trust the autofocus on your camera, um, you can do it that way. And like I say, double check whether or not uh, it's definitely gone into focus, which means that you probably don't 100% trust your autofocus on your camera, but I don't believe that you should anyway. But yeah, th that's honestly, I've, that's what I've been doing for the past three months, and it works, you know? Like I said, I've never had any complications. It's quick by the time you learn how to do it, because you are essentially autofocusing, you know? Um, and yeah, I think this, well, I was going to say I think it's going to be a nice shot. I don't really think it is, to be honest. I think it's going to be a nice scouting photograph you know i can remember this tree i can remember this composition to come back to so composition's um set the focus is all dialed in um and my settings are f9 iso 125th of a second So there you go, that's my um, focusing technique. I will say as well that, I mean, I even do that if I'm shooting handheld, I'm so used to doing it now. It's a little bit more faff, you know, cause you've got two hands holding your camera and you're trying to magnify in on your focal point and then use the back button focus, but it doesn't bother me, you know? It guarantees me sharp photographs and for me, that's incredibly important, you know? So I follow that same routine with every photograph, unless I'm rushing <laughs> and there's some amazing light. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you got some value from it. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy landscape photography adventures and a few tips and tricks along the way. Um, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers for tuning in. Out. Out.